Hey Canucks fans, Gaudet and Ben are out. Highmore, Bowie, and additional draft pick are in. Let's talk about how Jim Benning did at the trade deadline yesterday. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, April the 13th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. I want to give a shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Incredible, Nux fan number 29, and Lucas Gates. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of members of all levels. You are listed in my video description. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or any of my videos, or on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Thanks to everyone who joined us last night. Well, I'm, I'm going to let you know a little secret. I'm actually filming this Monday night for release on Tuesday morning. So really, thanks to everyone who joined us just about an hour ago. But no, let's pretend it's Tuesday morning. Thanks to everyone who joined us last night for the debut of Canucks After Dark, a collaborative project, me and Parker's Pucks. We had a really good time. It looked good. It sounded good, all because of Parker. He does all the work, all the heavy lifting. I just come to bring you know my good looks, my insight, and my small following. And we had a really good time. Talked about a lot of things, some things we're gonna talk about now, some great interaction. So so thanks to everyone who, who watched it. If you didn't get a chance to watch it live, you can still catch it on YouTube or on a lot of the podcast platforms as well. But if you follow Parker's Pucks on Twitter, he will, um, or subscribe to him, he will, um, he'll list everything. He'll tell you exactly where to find everything. And uh, yeah, or I'm gonna link to last night's show in, in the description and then you can see all the links there as well so looking forward to doing that every monday night at 10 p.m understandably one thing we spent a lot of time talking about was the trade deadline and the vancouver canucks now i did a video early in the day when it was adam Gaudet traded to the chicago blackhawks for matthew highmore another ford looks to be a fourth liner the the news i wanted to add to that is that when jim benning did his press conference kind of threw some indirect shade at Gaudet, saying that Gaudet wanted to play up in the lineup, wanted to do more, have a bigger role, and that the Canucks basically gave Gaudet a chance to develop and it didn't happen. Now they trade him for someone who maybe doesn't have as much offensive potential, but plays a, a more well-rounded game, both offensively and defensively. So I, I, I think Benning's trying to justify his move, but you have to think that you could have got more for Gaudet or, or at least, uh, yeah, is it is it a indictment? Indictment, I should say, on, on the way that the Canucks. Um, I don't think indictment is a word. It's spelled indictment. Is it an indictment on the way that Canucks developed or failed to develop Adam Gaudet? So I have vlogged about that already. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that right now. I want to talk about the other two trades and then talk about the trade deadline as a whole. So then the next trade that the Canucks announced was a, a minor one, but it was Jordy Ben who is going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season, he traded to the Winnipeg Jets for a sixth round draft pick in the 2021 draft. Now, um, it's insignificant, but it's significant in, in a way that, uh, yeah, you knew you weren't going to re-sign Jordy Ben. Jim Benning said as much in his in his press conference. Um, so to the fact that the Canucks were able to recoup anything for someone that they weren't going to sign, they were going to let walk at the end of the season, then I'd say you consider that a win. Now, a six-round draft pick, there's only seven rounds in the draft, so that tells you all you need to know. It wasn't a real high pick that the Canucks got, but again, if they were going to lose Ben to uh, their free agency anyways, and you knew that you weren't going to sign him, as Benning said in his press conference, then the fact that the Canucks recouped something back, even a low draft pick, nothing wrong with that. And that six-round draft pick, the Canucks might not even keep it. They could package it um, with some expansion draft, deals or whatever it may be which i'll get to in a second so that's fine you know jordy ben serviceable had a slow start to the season because he was actually um on covid protocol kind of interesting actually that the two canucks the two players that the canucks traded were actually um had, had were in covid protocol right jordy ben was the guy at the start of the season it was him and jt miller that were out and then adam Gaudet was basically patient zero at, at the most the Canucks most recent outbreak so interesting that Ben and Gaudet the two guys that were traded uh, from the Canucks not because of COVID the team will deny that some reporters are saying that that's true it wasn't because of that others are saying that you know some you know some of the players were actually upset at Gaudet that's not what I'm going to get into in this vlog the fact that we got a sixth round pick for Jordy Ben 
that's good. Jordy Ben will have a chance to to be a depth defenseman on a Winnipeg Jets team that hopes to go far in the playoffs. Then the third trade that the Canucks made was again looping back to the Chicago Blackhawks, and it was trading um, a fourth round draft pick for this season, for 2021 for this draft, for a fifth round draft pick, so a swap of fourth and fifth, and defense in Madison Bowie. Now, Bowie was on waivers early in the season, so some were, people were saying, well, why couldn't the Canucks get him for free before? But that's because the Canucks had no room to add anyone on waivers. So with Bowie, you're getting a right shot defense spin. He's got decent size and speed, but never really um, has, he hasn't really made his mark in the NHL just yet. Well, then you're saying, well, Clay, why do we even get this guy if he can't even break the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, break into their lineup? And that's because... He, there's a bigger, there's a bigger play at pitcher here or in pitcher. There's a bigger play here, um, and that's because when you get Bowie, you're able to do more when it comes to the expansion draft and the the players that you have to expose. We know that expansion draft is you have to do um, either protect seven forwards, three defensemen, one goalie, eleven players, or eight skaters, one goalie, only nine players. That second option is for guys who want to protect, teams that want to protect more than three defensemen. But the Canucks are likely going to go seven, three, and one. But not only do you get to protect those number of players, you also have to expose a certain number of players that have, quote, professional experience. You can't just put all your taxi squad guys or all your HL guys on the, you know, and, and keep them exposed. That's why Braden Holtby, you need a, a, a second professional goalie. That's why we will protect Demko. That's why we will expose Holtby. On, when it comes to forwards, there are a lot of guys you can expose, um, including like a Zach McEwen, a Jake Vertanen. So there's no shortage of forwards that you, uh, Roussel, uh, Beagle. There's no forage, uh, shortage of forwards that you can expose. But when it came to the Canucks defensemen, they were actually short because Quinn Hughes doesn't have to be protected because of his, uh, you know, his relative inexperience in the NHL, years of experience. And then Alex Edler, free agent, Travis Hammond, uh, UFA, Alex Edler, Sorry, I just said that. Alex Edler, UFA, Travis Hamannick, UFA, and Jordy Ben now gone. He was going to be UFA. So that only left Myers, Schmidt, and Yulevi, who, believe it or not, played way less than Hughes, but he has to be protected because he was drafted way back in 2015 or whatever it was, 2015, 2016 for Yulevi. It must have been 2014, it must have been 2016, yes. So Yulevi's drafted 2016. He has to be he has to be protected or exposed. But if you don't want to use, lose your levy, then if you're protecting your levy, Schmidt and Myers, before this trade, the Canucks needed to find a professional defenseman to expose. Remember, Edler, Ben, Hamnick were on their way out. So with Madison Bowie, now he meets the requirements because of his age he is now and his experience. Now he can be the one that's left exposed as the professional defenseman, so to speak. It doesn't mean the Seattle Kraken are going to take him. I don't. They will take Bowie. I think they'll take one of our forwards. I've always said that. Anyone. I actually was going to say it was going to be one of the four that weren't protected between Lynn, McEwen, Gaudet, and Vertanen. We we'll obviously take Gaudet out of that uh, equation right now. So all to say that the trade isn't so much about what's Madison Bowie going to do for our team, rather what's how he gives us more flexibility when it comes to the Seattle expansion draft. Speaking of expansion draft, I've talked about this many times on the channel. You can package picks and go after a team that won't be able to protect all of their forwards or defensemen. So any type of capital that you obtain during this trade, uh, during this trading deadline, is a good thing. And with that respect, yes, the Canucks traded a fourth away, but they got a fifth back. And then with the player of Madison Bowie, they traded Ben, but they got a sixth for that. So all told, for this trade deadline, the Canucks. Gave away, uh, traded away Gaudet, Ben, and a fourth rounder in this year's draft. But they got back Highmore, Bowie, and then a fifth and a sixth. So if you see four to three, the Canucks ship out two players. They get two players. They bring in two draft picks while shipping out one. The fourth and the fifth were basically reversal. I made the point with, with Parker and Canucks after dark last night that when you're getting into a fourth round, fifth round, sixth round in a draft where it's kind of like a crapshoot. You don't, a lot of these players didn't get a chance to play because of COVID. You know, you're just, you have probably just have a good just chance of, let's try that again. You have just a good of chance of getting someone good in the fifth or sixth round than you do in the fourth round. When you're that deep in the draft, 
you never know. They are indeed lottery picks. So whether the Canucks keep all their draft picks and now they wind up in this trade deadline with one more pick than before, or they use those and package them with players or with other picks and try and make some moves ahead of the expansion draft, at least every asset helps you do that a bit more. So all to say, what did I think of how Jim Benning did overall on the trade deadline? I, I'll give him a C plus. It wasn't an A or B grade, like excellent or very good. I don't think it was an excellent or very good trade deadline, but I don't think it was a poor one. Like it's not like he didn't move anyone and didn't recoup anything. So that would be a, a you know a C minus or a D or an F grade. So I give him a C plus, just average. We increased our asset base by one player, basically a draft pick. We lost Godet, a guy we wouldn't uh, you know might have cost a bit more to sign. We lost Ben, who we weren't going to resign. We have Bowie, who gives us some flexibility when it comes to expansion draft protection and exposure exposure for defensemen. And then we have Highmore, who could you know could be um, an actual player for us. Highmore and Bowie make only 725. The cap hits only 725 each. So for a team that's looking to save as much money as they can. I won't say cut corners, but save every dollar they can for Pedersen and Hughes. You are looking for some cost certainty. You're looking for some savings. So there's reasons why Jim Benning did that as well. And now you have guys like VC, Boyd, Harlock, um, Highmore, Bowie, guys, all guys that make $1 million or less. Be very interesting to see how they play into the Canucks plans for next year. But before that, you got to get through the expansion draft and the off season. So, so many angles to talk about. Um, I talked about the Godet trade, but now I've added the Ben trade and then the, the Bowie trade. Canucks fans, let me know what you think of how Jim Benning did. What letter grade would you give him? I give him a C plus, not an A or B, but not a failing grade either. Let's go with a C plus for me. Might be a little bit uh, generous, but that's kind of like my brand. That's kind of on point for me. I would love to know what letter grade you give Jim Benning for this trade deadline. Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply. As always, subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Uh, become a member of this channel if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go.